Hello everyone, and welcome to a new series that I am going to call The Angry Bassist Builds. I decided last night, uh, since I was talking about models on my update video, that I wanted to start a new series here uh, uh, because I have such a passion for model building that I want to make a series of my progression through the models that I'm building right now. And of course, uh, I'm just going to start you off with some of the models that I'm working on. Uh, the order that I'm going to work on them, and then I'm going to go over some of the materials that I use uh, while I'm building models. Uh, I know some of you beginners out there uh, may not know where to start, may not have a comfort zone or anything. Um, I started out new, and then I'll work my way up. But some of this stuff is easily attainable wherever you are, so don't be afraid to jump in. You can also get it on Amazon. I'm going to leave, leave links down below where you can pick this stuff up. Uh, maybe to the models too. Some of them are still made, some aren't. So, um... To start off, um, I have been building models since I was a small child, I guess. At least five or six, my very first model was a Snap Tie at 4E Phantom from the Vietnam War. That got me started and that's why I turned into this big model builder in my sp spare time. Uh, not a lot of people know that about me. Uh, my appearance doesn't really lend itself to someone that builds models or does nerdy little things like that. Of course, but um, one of the models that I am working on right now is my Ecto-1. I'm going to build this one as uh, the Ecto-1, not the Ecto-1A from Ghostbusters 2. Uh, this is just going to be the basic model, so I'm going to take you guys through the completion of that one when I get done with it, and I'm going to take you through the rest of the steps. So of course, I've got it um, partially built already. I've still got the interior and everything to go, so I'll take you guys through that with me as I go. Um, it's been a fun experience going through this model. It's the first car that I've built. Well, car, car. Uh, of course, this is based on a Cadillac uh, ambulance. Um, uh, the last car that I built was, of course, the Batmobile from the 1989 Tim Burton Batman with Michael Keaton, which he is still the Batman, and there are no others. I'm sorry to any of you Christian Bale fans out there. And, of course, uh, I know nobody really likes the nipple suit, so I digress. We'll move on from that. Um, this has been a fun little build so far. Uh, this is where, I, this is the model that I actually discovered that working on my models, uh, it brings a lot of the tension down, uh, from, uh, I would get from playing video games or something like that. It makes me less nervous and it doesn't really get everything all worked up and everything. So, um, I just wanted to take you guys through some of the models that I'm working on now, other than that one. Uh, the next one that I'm going to be working on is from Rebel. It is a 148 scale F14, F15E Strike Eagle. Uh, this is a fairly large model. There's a lot of small pieces in it. Um, kind of daunting. I've never actually worked on something that has this many small pieces. Uh, especially for the engines and everything. Um, there's a lot of sprues in this one and I'm not used to that. So it's kind of scary to me. Um, as you can see, uh, there are tons of tiny little pieces here for each part of the plane. Uh, this will actually be my first actual, uh, glue together, uh, jet fighter. Uh, typically I don't build models like this. I build more movie models and everything, but this is something that I wanted to build. I picked it up relatively cheap at a Hobby Lobby. Um, I think I gave maybe $20 for it. It was a pretty good deal. Um, I look forward to building this one. I just need to get the rest of the paint together to paint it correctly. My dad was in the Navy and um, my father-in-law was in the Air Force. So maybe I can get some uh, hints and help from them on that. Um, but I think this will be a fun little build. This one will take a while with all of the little intricate parts and everything that would need to be um, painted and glued together and everything there but the big one that i wanted to go over with you guys uh that i talked about in last night's video over on the blog and the angry basis channel um well this is still the same channel just a different series uh would be my 1350 scale uss enterprise this is the enterprise a refit from star trek 3 um this is a 1350 scale it is a giant giant model um it has over 150 pieces in it um and 
I did. I told you guys that the main saucer section was larger than a dinner plate, and uh, I just wanted to show that to you guys so you guys could get some idea the sense of scale on this thing. Of course, I've already started on it. I started on it, on it a long time ago. Um, I primed it. And I got a lot of the light work done. This one is going to be a lighted model. It's um, going to be my second attempt at lighting a Star Trek model. Um, I've just got a couple of parts here to show you some reference on how large this model is going to be once it's done. Uh, of course, you can see a box full of parts here. Um, this one is going to be super fun to go through. It's going to take a lot of time and a lot of patience, but I think it'll look great when it's done. Uh, for starters, uh, for any of you Star Trek fans out there, you know that the Enterprise has nacelle engines. This is just one of the nacelles. This will be the, I don't know, the starboard and uh, port sides. I, I, my dad's the Navy ship guy, so I don't understand how that goes. But this is just one of the nacelles. This is the left side if you're looking towards the front of the ship. Uh, it'll be on this side here. Um, of course, I'll show these two guys here in just a second. That's actually the decals. That's the part I'm most excited for. Um, but in terms of the saucer itself, this is how large it is. It is larger than a dinner plate. And, um... What I can show you guys is I've gone ahead and uh, the holes are already in for all the windows. I've got all the cutouts for the lights to go in. I'm going to use surface mount LEDs or SMDs to light this up to, uh, just so it doesn't draw so much power and it doesn't melt anything and they stay cool. Um, you can also see that I've putted in a lot of the seams and everything to block out the light and I've got everything sanded down. I primed this with, uh, believe it or not, I primed it with a uh, car primer. Uh, I had a bottle left over from when I was painting my car. So I just sprayed this and the rest of the body down with self etching primer and it did a really great job. I've got amazing coverage with it. Uh, some of these things, uh, especially with automotive products, you may want to make sure that it's not um, caustic to styrene models or anything like that. You just got to see what's compatible with the plastic your model is made out of. Um, that way it doesn't melt or mar or anything like that. That way you don't have a ruined model. And this is the bottom section of the saucer. Um, it's a little bit thinner. Uh, of course, uh, you got the overlap here with the windows and everything on the other one. Uh, I think this is going to be a really beautiful model when I'm done with it. Um, this will be my first attempt at actually applying uh, for any of you Star Trek fans out there. If you've ever worked on one at applying the Aztecs to the model that uses a lot of pearlescent colors of um, blues, reds, greens, golds uh, that goes across the entire saucer section, the secondary hole which is the center and then up the uh, pylons which are the arms that hold the nacelles on. So that'll, that'll be a very long process getting everything painted correctly. I have to get a hold of the masks and everything to make it um, turn out properly um i don't want to half-ass this one and just have it looking horrible um actually got approval from my wife to put shelves up on that wall there for me to put my models on and i really want that to be the centerpiece of the model so that's one thing i'm looking at there and this is just um this model is fairly old um it was from the first run this one is made by polar lights uh it's not commissioned by AMT or Ravel or anything like that. So that's the original version of this model, uh, but it comes with everything. Uh, you've got the insignias and designators here, and this is the refit. This isn't the NCC-1701 like I thought it was. This is the pure refit. Oh wait, you can do the NCC-1701 here. Uh, of course, they do have a minor paint scheme differences, so uh, we'll have to take a look at that. And kind of go from there and see what we can find out but um got all the striping and brand banding and everything i'm going to show that to you guys there really nicely done uh decals of course there are um photo etch sets that i can get for this particular model uh for any of you guys who don't know what a photo etch set is 
Uh, it's parts made out of brass that are cut to make the models as realistic and movie accurate as possible. They're, they're not really expensive. They can get expensive depending on what you're working on. But um, my dad's actually got one working on one of these too. I got him one of these for I think uh, either his birthday or Father's Day, whatever. Uh, and it's a really nice model. They're all made the same. Um, they're all made by Polar Lights. Uh, round 2 did make a version of it that goes together essentially the same. There's no difference in between them. But um, these kits are a lot of fun. I've been building Star Trek models for years and years. I've built some, the, uh, I think a 14800 scale or something. I can't remember what the Enterprise D is that I built. Um, it's over 18 inches long that's all I know uh, I'm sure the scale is on the instruction sheet somewhere but that's something I'll look up and I'll let you guys know in a later video because this is going to turn into a multi-part thing I really want this to be a good running series I hope everyone enjoys it but I'm, I'm going to go over a couple of things that I use to put these models together uh, my primary uh go-to's uh, in terms of glue I use uh, CA glue uh, you can pick this up at Hobby Lobby uh, any hobby store that you have usually has it uh, it's kind of like a super glue you can get it in a few different uh, uh, thicknesses if you want to call it but how liquidy it is and then you have this stuff it's called Instaset it's accelerator I call it quick zip um, I, guy that I watch on here on YouTube at Truckworks, he uses it, he calls it Zip Quick or Quick Zipper or whatever it is, but basically um, put the glue on, spray the parts, and it sets it automa automatically. You don't have to wait for it to dry and it's perfect, especially if you're kind of impatient like I am. I get that way sometimes, so I just zip it and it's good to go. But one thing you need to watch out for when you're using the Zip Quick is if you've already, if you're gluing parts that you've already, um, glued together or painted rather not glued together but if you're gluing together parts that you've already painted if you hit it with the zip it will take the paint off of whatever you're working on uh, so uh, for instance like with the Ecto-1 here if you look at the joints between the roof of the car and the rack there you can see kind of where the paint has kind of pulled in the glue. Um, I didn't think about that beforehand. I have a habit of that sometimes, and that's what made it run. Uh, but there are a couple of other glues that I work with here. I just basically use your standard liquid plastic cement from testers. Um, that's the maximum strength here. Um, I do use clear parts cement. Now, this is also a window maker for like a instance on the enterprise model here all the little holes in the side for the windows and everything you can fill those in with this and it makes a clear window it dries completely clear this is what i use to put all the windows in my cars in the batmobile on planes all the clear parts and stuff like that will be done with that um it doesn't take that long to dry it's kind of like a watered down elmer's glue almost and then you get the uh non-toxic liquid cement uh the fumes aren't as bad on this one as they are with the red bottle i generally prefer these over the red bottle any day um in terms of paints i use your basic testers enamel paints i'll use a uh, testers um spray paint uh, i'm no good with an airbrush i never have been um that's the downside uh, my dad's an airbrush guy he knows how to use all that i don't i never could get the hang of it and mixing the paint and everything but these are some of the tools that I use. Of course, there is going to be the one tool that you can't build a model without, and that will be a good hobby knife. Uh, some call it an exacto knife. I call it a hobby knife, whatever it is. Uh, be careful, don't cut towards yourself, and keep make sure you don't cut your fingers with these because I've done that, and that leaves a mark. And it hurts super bad. Uh, but I digress. These are some of the tools that I use to build models on an everyday basis. This is my general tool kit. Of course, I do have an array of um, paint brushes and everything. And as I go to use those, I'll let you guys know what I'm using. 
uh, and for what purpose I'm using them for. I mean, I, I know there may be a lot of questions about what I'm going to use here and how it's used and uh, the proper use. And sometimes there's a little bit of an unorthodox method of using some of these tools, but we'll go over them as we go and I'll let you guys know why I actually use those tools. But uh, here on the Angry Basis builds, uh, there will be a little bit different format and a little bit different setup than what you're seeing right now. This is just the general overview of what we're going to be doing on this series here. Um, I will upload it as it goes. Um, of course, I do have to work. So, that being said, I'll make these episodes when I had the time off of work. I've also got to fix the car. So, um, as I go, I'll keep you guys updated and informed with how the progresses are going. Um, I may actually shoot me actually working on some of them sometimes. Uh, that can be kind of boring, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go do it, and then I will we'll show you guys the finished project product after I'm done doing it. That way you'll kind of know uh, what's going on. But if there's something important that I think you guys should see in terms of getting everything together and actually getting it put on the model that we're currently working on, um, I will let you guys know. Of course, if you have any of these models, uh, you can leave some comments down below what you've done with those and what we can do differently. Uh, I'd like this to turn into a community and not just kind of uh, watch it sparsely because uh, model building is something that is very near and dear to my heart and I'll carry that with me everywhere I go. But that is the new series that will be coming at least once a week. Uh, of course, model building takes time. It's not something that you can just power your way through and be done with it. So with that being said, uh, as the episodes come, uh, I hope you guys enjoy them. I hope you guys enjoyed a walkthrough of what I'm working on, the tools that I use. Um, I will drop some links down below for some of these models. Of course, with the Enterprise A, the, this particular Polar Lights version isn't available but they do have the newer revised version available. It is kind of costly, so uh, I wouldn't recommend actually going into purchasing this one unless you have a serious want to build this model. Uh, any of the other ones here that I have, um, of course I'll leave links down below for Amazon, stuff like that, where you can pick them up. I am not affiliated with Amazon. I just want to show you guys where you can pick it up and for what cost, and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and I will look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. As always, happy modeling.